where have you been? And when you come home, you gotta share all alone. Mommy, where daddy went? You always pick a flame. And now, more First Aid with Kelly Kincaid on Shade 45. All right, this is what I want to do, man. Everybody, um, we always um, have a different authors up here that write books that move us one way or another. Uh, this book is called He Never Came Home. It's interviews, stories, and essays from daughters on life without their fathers. Uh, by Regina Robertson, who's here with us today, West Coast editor of Essence. Um, this is um, this is a really unique kind of book, Thank you know, because this is, uh, as Kelly said, 24 million um, uh, kids are growing up in homes without their biological dads. Yep. And we, we're still trying to figure out what effect does that really have on children? Mm-hmm. And it, I think it affects sons differently from daughters, but nevertheless, it still affects them, mm-hmm. you know. Um, what did you gain from that? Talking to those who wrote at, at, uh, stories and essays, what kind? How did they say it affected them not having their fathers? Um, it depends on the person in the in the circumstance. Um, for people that didn't have any relationship, I mean, for me, it was sort of like um, it made me feel invisible, but invisible in a in a sense that it fortified like it just gave me this energy to like oh no one's looking so i'm gonna go ahead and do whatever, whatever it is set your mind yeah too. so it was, so it's it turned out to be in the long run sort How'd... of like okay like this is my life you sort of make a choice like this is as gabrielle reese said you you have cards you dealt good cards and you dealt not so great cards and you have to know when to play do, your good cards do you think um in your relations with um a men um brother's business or otherwise that that played a role in how that how you communicated with men oh absolutely yeah. um it's so funny because i get told all the time that i'm so independent i'm like well if like i gotta take care of me i'm an only child you uh-huh. know and i i think even as a as a little girl i mean i remember really knowing that people show up for who and what they want to show up for. I, I knew that as like a six-year-old, not in a negative sense. Like I always knew that like whatever it was, I had to take care of it for myself. It was me and my mother against the world. That's how I felt as a kid. Mm-hmm. And my mother did everything. I find it so interesting because the independence, having a father, I'm independent. And like we I always said, we're on the different uh, ends, of the, ends of the spectrum. And you you said while other girls were daydreaming about marriage proposals, you wanted to be a creative person. Yeah. I felt the same way. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Life <laughs> it is, is crazy. crazy. <laughs> it's very crazy. Me too. You felt Me too. that way too? Okay. Yeah. And you you grew up Tracy's in a home there. with your father and your mother. Yes. And my dad would always say I was the best because even though he wanted a son, he was great with having a tomboy like me that could do everything. Me Put too, it down, okay, lift up great. the couches, okay. put up the wallpaper, okay. all of it. Let's get to the callers. <laughs> Ashley's on the line. <laughs> Ashley from Texas is on the line. Ashley, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How, how, how are y'all doing? Good. good. Ashley, this sounds like a great book for you to get. <laughs> he never came I know, home. but... My dad never came home neither, and, like, the way the conversation went, my grandma actually told me what happened. What so, happened? He, so, basically, um, my grandma and my uncle went down. We lived in Alabama at the time, and my dad, he was a truck driver, so I always knew he was gone. But my grandma told me they asked him if it was either your family or crack, and he chose the crack. Oh. So, he never came back. How old were you? Um, you always knew your father w- wasn't there, or when did your grandmother have that conversation with you? Um, she had it with me. Um, I was turning 21, and I was going to throw a party at her house, so my grandma kind of let me do free range anything. Mm-hmm. And so she was like, I think you're old enough to know that this is what happened. And my mom was kind of upset because she never wanted to tell any of us because she had five kids. And so my mom was like, why would you tell them that? That is just, like, ridiculous. And my grandma was like, no, nah, she can handle it. She's been doing fine now. She needs to know the truth. So So your dad mm-hmm. took chose crack instead of raising his children? Yes. Wow. Now, do you have children now? Yes, I have a girl. I actually have a daughter. Mm. And her uh, father, I guess, he was in kind of like the same predicament as me. And he's like... He always wanted to do her hair. He wanted to dress her. So mm-hmm. they have the best relationship ever. 
So I can never take that away. I'm happy that he gives that to her, something that I couldn't get from mine. How is your relationship with her father? What oh, you- great. We're still together. We're high school sweethearts. Okay, cool. So, <laughs> all right. So, so, so. You're doing all right. You should definitely pick up this book, though. Yeah. He Never Came Home, uh, Regina Robertson, okay? Oh, sounds good. I definitely will. All right. Thank you. See, oh, look at you. that. You're getting more testimonials. Thank you. That's you know? a beautiful story. Yeah. Uh, we got an anonymous caller on the line. Oh. What's up, anonymous <laughs> caller from Pennsylvania? Good morning. Hi. How are you? You're doing okay. Doing okay. Um, can, can, instead of calling you anonymous, can you just give me a letter I can identify <laughs> you as? Uh, we'll say L. L, okay, L Boogie. Yes. I'll even put some, I'll personalize it, you know. So what's your story? Um, It's it's not me, it's my daughter. I'm sorry, it's emotional for me. Uh-huh. Um, When she was a year old, her father was arrested for some homicides, um, money laundering, drug kingpin, drug trafficking, everything within those bounds. Um, I could never let people know who my daughter was in fear of retaliation, uh-huh. and I'm talking severe retaliation. Uh-huh. Um, you know, as she got older, I always took her to visit her father, always, until he was taken out of state. You know, that was his baby. He has other children, and all of us mothers, we get along perfectly we're all friends because no matter what the kids should always they're siblings and that's what they need to be and it's very hard when you are raising a child you know i never told her bad things about her father Mm -hmm. when she got older i did tell her what he was in prison for and i left that decision up to her whether she wanted to be a part of his life or not. And they are the best of friends. I mean, she's the youngest, and that is his baby. You know, and she tells all her siblings, you know I'm his favorite. You know, and it's mm-hmm. it's very, very hard, and a lot of people just do not understand what it's like to raise a child who the parent is incarcerated, and especially under the circumstances for which he is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to know that she's going to get married one day, and he's not going to be there to walk her down the aisle. You know, I was there for the birth of our granddaughter. He was not. And these are very emotional times where you want that person there. Yeah. You know, and, and and I'm not angry as you know an ex-girlfriend an ex-woman i'm not angry at him you know we all go down a path in lifetime and mine may not have been what everybody else wanted it to be or or the same with him but all i can do is you know there were enough people turning their back on him me as the mother of his child did not and would not do that Mm -hmm. because i never wanted for my daughter to dislike me or hate me because you know i didn't take her to see her dad or any of those things can i was your dad in your life oh my dad was always in my life up until the the day he passed away yes okay Okay. he was and so in a sense i mean not in the ideal situation but it sounds like your daughter got a piece of her dad in her life it's just the circumstances are tragic that she only knows her dad from behind bars but they've maintained some type of relationship is what you're saying oh she goes to visit him he he is in federal prison and she goes to visit him is that that that's better than not being there at all i mean yeah at least you know where he's at and how yes. old is your daughter? Plane, how, how old is she? she she's twenty two mm-hmm. and she took our first our first grandchild to go visit him. Mm-hmm. And the pictures were just they were amazing, you know, and and, wow. and I'm glad she has, you know, that relationship, that bond with him because every year since she was born, he has never forgotten her birthday. She receives a card. Every year, and it's funny because her birthday is the day before mine, 
And he also sends me a card as well every year. Has never missed a year. Wow. So, you know, he knows how I feel about everything. Who am I to judge? My life isn't perfect. You know, I don't judge him. I'm just glad that she knows who he is. Who, and right. He knows and, what he's done. And he make, he's making an effort even from prison is better than guys who don't make an effort who are free. Absolutely. Right. Um, L Boogie, thank you for sharing your story. I know it's a really book. touchy story. Yeah. You should get this book for your daughter. Um, he never came home, even for yourself. Sounds like you could benefit from it too. You're a citizen. A sway in the morning. Okay. Regina, how can people get this book? The book is on Amazon, okay. and I just found it in Barnes and Noble the other day, so that was exciting. I had to take a picture of that. Yeah, all um, you know, Barnes and Noble online booksellers. Well, thank you for mm-hmm. coming to the show. What's thank your you. social media? If people want to reach you directly because yes. you got, we got a lot of people on the line. Like Kosh from Cali has an interesting question. DV from Cali, um, Eileen from Texas, Amber from Kansas, Fanatic from Chicago, uh, Lewis uh, from Chicago. You can reach her directly. Continue the conversation with Regina. Yes. On Twitter, I'm Regina Robertson. On Instagram, I'm Regina R. Robertson. I'm very attached to my middle initial, I have okay. to tell you. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, Regina R. I'm sorry. Regina. I'm... It's fine. Okay. It's fine. Okay. But Twitter, I couldn't get the R in there. There are okay. a lot of, you know, okay. letters in my name. But Regina Robertson on Twitter and Regina R. Robertson on Instagram. Kelly, how can I reach you? You can reach me on all socials. Kelly Kincaid. K-E-L-L-Y-K-I-N-K-A-I-D. Regina, thanks for coming Thank through. Thank you for having yeah. me. Absolutely. I love the applause. Yeah, so we're happy you're here. <laughs> yeah, turn it Look, louder. They're happier. They're happier. <laughs> All right, so up next, um, Damson Idris is coming by. He's the star of the new series Snowfall, and John Singleton is with him. If you're a Snowfall uh, view, uh, viewer, 888-742-3345. I'll let you talk to John and Damson. It's Sway in the morning. Only on Shade 45.